Hi everyone, my name is Callum Fraser and I'm the Director of Choirs at the University of Nottingham. Today, as part of the Not Stopping Festival, I'm here to give you a brief insight into how to conduct a choir. Um, most of us, at some point in our lives, have sung something or other, whether that's been in a choir or a band or individually. Uh, most choirs have a conductor and so many people wonder what these conductors do. Hopefully in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, I'll be able to give you a little bit of an idea. So a conductor has two particular jobs. Job number one is to rehearse the music with the ensemble, the choir or the orchestra. And that involves uh, leading from the front and uh, listening to what's going on during the rehearsal and making changes uh, as you go. The second part of the role is to actually conduct the concert. And in this sense, the, the gestural vocabulary that one would use. And it's this latter part that I'm going to focus on today. So we will look at beat patterns, tempo, and, uh, and the types of music one might conduct. People often ask me what the difference is between conducting an orchestra or a group of instrumentalists and a choir. The answer is that though there are some differences, there are many more similarities. The rehearsal process is very similar and the actual gestural vocabulary that one uses is very similar. The small differences occur in that singers sing text, they sing words and tell a story that way, and uh, the voice is produced in a very similar way right across the choir, in the way that sound is not produced in a similar way between string players plucking or bowing an instrument and wind or brass players blowing down their instrument to create a sound. And so today we're going to focus on conducting a choir or a group of singers. Uh, this is my specialism and it's uh, my role at uh, the University of Nottingham and through the Lakeside Arts Centre and all the fantastic work they do there. Um, the basic understanding of conducting a choir is that everyone is breathing together, everyone is making the same sound together and this uh, is all to do with the preparation of the sound. And you can help that as a conductor. A basic knowledge of the voice is essential uh, to demonstrate in rehearsals. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words and a demonstration is worth a thousand sentences in a rehearsal. Uh, when you are conducting a choir, it's so important to breathe with the ensemble. When I'm teaching, conducting to the students at the university, the thing I say more than anything else is breathe with the choir. Uh, so we're going to look ahead now and do some basic conducting patterns with that in mind. So if we've got a piece in front of us, the first thing we need to do is work out how many beats are in the bar because that will affect the pattern that we conduct. Let's imagine our first piece has four beats in a bar. So many do. Um, I'm going to conduct with my left hand here. If you want to copy and mirror me with your right hand or go with your left hand, that's absolutely fine. So four in a bar, beat one goes down, two goes across your body, three back across and four up, known as the upbeat. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, Now, uh, before we can start a piece, of course, we've got to give an upbeat. What is the point in an upbeat? Is to set the tempo and set the style that we're trying to achieve with this piece. So, if you want the piece to be energetic and enthusiastic, the upbeat would be a something like that with a sharp intake of breath. If it's a more lackadaisical, free-flowing sort of uh, mood you're going for, that sort of thing. I've been thinking, what is a great piece to do in uh, four beats in the bar that everyone will probably know? I've decided on bar, bar, black sheep. Uh, so um, we'll just give uh, one upbeat and then I'll sing along. 
and then we'll just practice conducting ba ba black sheep. So, ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master and one for the dame and one for the little boy who lived down the lane. Now I talked before about uh, the conductor setting the tempo and even in a simple little piece like this we can change the tempo as much as we want. Difficult when you've not got a choir in front of you. Uh, it'll be easier when we're, we're back together in person but uh, Interesting, I have to say, trying to do this with a virtual choir. Almost impossible, but uh, we have given it a go with some of the groups I work with. Uh, here I'll demonstrate Bar Bar Black Sheep getting faster. And I will only follow my, with my singing the hand gestures that I'm making. So, Bar Bar Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master and one for the dame and one for the little boy who lived down the lane. So you see, uh, my the speed of my hand is getting quicker and actually the size of the beat often gets smaller. If you have less distance to travel, you are more likely to reach your destination more quickly and it will speed up the tempo. Um, we will try this time getting a bit slower. So the same thing. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master and one for the dame and one for the little boy who lived down the Next, we're going to talk about the different quality and type of sound you might want from your choir and how to achieve that with your various conducting gestures. If you're wanting a very legato, a sustained, gentle kind of sound, you're wanting to use more lateral beat patterns. So you might beat at an angle slightly and your two and three going across your body will use up more space. So again, using our bar bar black sheep. Bar bar black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. If we're wanting a spiky version of this, we would be using a, a more vertical beat, like so. Bar bar black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. All absolutely fantastic. Well done, everybody. I can tell you're making a great job of this. Um, I don't know if anyone else is frustrated with their lockdown hair as much as I am. I've got a little kind of tuft that's growing growing out here that I can just see on the video that's frustrating me no end. But there we go. Um, we're next going to focus on hand positions. So we've talked about the lateral and the vertical arm movements. In terms of hand positions, we can alter the type of sound we get just by shaping our fingers in a slightly different way or, or um, how, how we place our palm. So. In general, I would suggest palm to the floor allows you to create a nice line with your arm, which creates a very clear signal to the choir rather than this sort of thing where people don't quite know what to follow. If you're wanting a really precise sound, we might go for this sort of gesture. It's very clear, very thorough. If we're wanting a uh, legato sound, very gentle, you might loosen off the fingers and paint that phrase a little bit, like so. In terms of volume, the size of sound, um, we've got many different points where we can conduct from. Got one up here, the shoulder, 
one from the elbow, one from the wrist, and all the way down the fingers like so. You could theoretically conduct just like that. You'd have to have a very small choir who are very good to do that. A lot of quiet music is conducted from the wrist, an awful lot led by the elbow, and occasionally you might really get your shoulder into it for some really big music, huge forces, lots of singers, instrumentalists, whatever you might have. But be aware of the, the size of sound and the scope of the piece uh, you are conducting. What we don't want is the first gesture to be absolutely massive that you've got nowhere to build up to. So that's us mastered four in a bar. One, two, three, and four. If it's three in a bar, you know, lots of waltzes and the like are in three in a bar. Quite similar, so downbeat is there. Two and three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we effectively get rid of that second beat we just have down, out, up, down, out, up. Always important to remember that your strongest point is this little box in front of your torso. You don't want your hands out here and here beating. So even with that second beat in a three, one, two, three. Never out there. Two in a bar, we, we get rid of the middle one. So it's down and up, down and up. I always like to think you are shaping an egg and then you are chopping the top off an egg. One, two, one, two, one, two. So there's some exercises to, to play around with at home. Uh, if you're really getting advanced on all of this, you can try to conduct uh, in four in a bar with one hand and three in a bar with another hand. I'll try it. Uh, Something like that. Um, but it does work the, it works the brain and uh, it creates independence within your hands. What you don't want is just to mirror both of your hands together because um, you are giving the same information to the choir and uh, there's no need for that at all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're running out of time, sadly. Um, I do hope that you have found this interesting. And um, if, if you're ever interested in conducting, um, please do come along to any uh, concerts at the Lakeside Arts Centre, whether that's the University Choir and Chamber Choir or the University Philharmonia. Um, we hope to be offering those concerts again as soon as possible. Uh, the final thing I would just like to leave you with is the fact that no conductor is the same. Everybody has their own technique. It needs to work for the ensemble, but it's got to work for your own body. Everyone's limbs are different lengths. Everyone is a different height and a different build, and it has got to work for you. So by all means, look at all, all the greats on YouTube or on, on DVDs, uh, and you'll find that they all do it very different ways. But there are some basic tips for you, and all the best.